sometimes you're looking at things and you're like, hey, I know that guy. That is very much the AK-47. Extremely, extremely iconic. So I'm so excited to show you. Ahoy! What could be more iconic than the Kalashnikov? Very few things. Very Rough few hewn things. from wood and iron. Its simple construction belies an enduring example of industrial design. It's the weapon of choice for a revolution and the backbone of any insurgency. Oh, for sure. So, what makes the AK so special? Why is a near 70-year-old rifle still so popular? And is there really no substitute? Let's find out. The reason I think the AK-47 is so iconic is, is it is absolutely an incredible feat of engineering. And the first time that you hear that bolt carrier go forward, it's almost like hearing a grand ping for the first time. Such a satisfying sound and very, very, very fascinating and extremely, extremely iconic firearm. The legendary rifle story starts in Soviet Russia in the embers of World War II. Yes. This was an era of rapid technological progress amidst valiant acts, and the Soviet Union loved the hero. Mikhail Kalashnikov was a tanker in the Red Army, wounded in action in 1941. During his recuperation, he learned of his comrades' woes with their issued rifles, and resolved to tackle them with a soldier-focused approach to small arms design, with innate usability born from simplicity and reliable function. I really think that simplicity in firearms is the key to making an exceptional firearm. Sometimes I think asking if they can, they don't stop to think if they should. If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? His early designs caught the eye of officials, and Kalashnikov found himself part of a small arms development group for the Red Army. The Soviets were not shy to take influence from what other forces were fielding, and between captured Nazi weapons, allied supplies, and a long line of Russian prototypes, the AK-47 began to take shape. Oh yeah. The German Sturmgewehr 44 was a major influence. Absolutely. With similar it was so interesting to me how influential World War II firearms are. Throughout World War II, I feel there was just such a huge advancement in them. And so it's interesting just to see today what we use in modern times compared to then. Evolution of it was so fascinating to watch. Form factor improved the viability of a mid power cartridge and provided the gas system for Kalashnikov's design. Yeah, it did. The earlier RPD would also lend its intermediate cartridge to the AK 47, the 7.62 by 39 millimeter round, also known as the M43. Oh, yeah. Its slightly tapered casing is responsible for giving the AK 47 its distinctive curved magazine. In demonstrations, the 1947 prototype outperformed any rival and was readily adopted by the Russians, although initial manufacturing issues did slow down deployment. These issues were remedied by 1959, when a modernized version was introduced, known as the AKM. It replaced the milled receiver with a stamped metal one, both lighter and easier to produce. It's interesting to see how they improve firearms as well, especially with the AK-47. The improvements made, it's fascinating also equipped with a muzzle brake to improve the accuracy of automatic fire. Ah, the classic muzzle brake! There were a large number of variants of this basic design. From the AKS with a folding stock, to a large number of foreign produced AK pattern rifles, such as the Chinese Type 56, Hungarian AMD 65, or the Finnish RK62. That's interesting. The smaller caliber AK74 emerged in 1974. That's a little guy. <laughs> No, I would love to know what you guys think about the AK-74 too. Do you guys like it or do you prefer the 47? During the lighter but higher velocity 5.45 by 39 millimeter round. With greater wounding potential versus the older round, the AK-74 would supplement and eventually replace the AKM in service. Pair these variants with such a broad service history and you have a recipe for a very popular weapon indeed. Oh yeah, for sure. There have been more Kalashnikov pattern rifles made than all other assault rifles combined. In fact, of all the small arms that exist, one in five is an AK. Whoa, I did not know that one in five is an AK. Whoa, I can't even fathom that number. It's utterly ubiquitous, found in every corner of the globe. Wow. 
And such is its influence, it even adorns the flag of Mozambique. No surprise then that the AK-47 is as popular in video games as it is in real life. For sure. With perhaps as many digital renditions as those stamped from steel. It's so well known that most instances, regardless of variant, are labelled as the AK-47 without fear of license rights. Only the most cautious opt to use are SADS appellations, such as GoldenEye's KF-7 Soviet or the CV-47 in earlier Counter-Strike games. Oh, okay. These virtual depictions reflect the rifle's design in a variety of ways, but there's no mistaking the familiar characteristics of the AK. Absolutely. Often, a weapon's identity is forged by the powers that wield it, and with its prominent use by the Second World during the Cold War, the AK has come to symbolize the defiance and might of those who would oppose the West. It's the foil to the American M16, and the weapon of choice for any opposing force. It's so interesting how both the M16 and the AK-47 have such big influences. I do know a lot of people that are diehard AK-47 fans, so I would love to know what you think. And for that reason, it's often the default option for the bad guys in games that mirror any recent conflict. In some cases, like in Counter-Strike, the AK is only available to the terrorist forces. And here, it has prime placement being the top-tier automatic weapon on offer, alongside the counter-terrorist M4. Perhaps it's by its association with untrained militia fighters, or just affinity by design. But long bursts of automatic fire, spray and prey, seems like a natural fit for the AK. It has perfectly good accuracy, and is more than capable of hitting targets within its effective range. Whenever you get one in Left 4 Dead 2, it is so much fun. It is very effective, although in Left 4 Dead I always end up grabbing a melee weapon. I don't know why. But somehow, the AK doesn't feel like a marksman's rifle. Luckily, the weapon is quite suited to sustained fire, and this is normally reflected within its depiction. The AK's rate of fire is fairly moderate, and while recoil is present, it's still possible to rest the weapon onto a close-range target. It's not particularly elegant, nor great for ammo conservation, but you've got 30 chances to hit something, even if it's not what you were aiming at. That's true! <laughs> of yeah. course, it's not just enough to be capable of automatic fire. A weapon must also be able to dole out magazine after magazine without stoppage or fuss. That is very true. I think because the magazine is curved, it's also sort of just fits in your hand better in a way. Luckily, the AK's reliability is legendary. With loose tolerances and as simple a mechanism as possible, there's not too much that can go wrong, and even less that can't be put right. This is one trait that doesn't transfer well to video games. Malfunctions are seldom shown, as firearm maintenance isn't a particularly exciting endeavor. And experiencing a feed failure mid-firefight would only prove frustrating. Some games do reflect these factors, however, perhaps most notably Far Cry 2, with scavenged weapons proving much less reliable than those bought oh, brand new. Oh, interesting. Weapon Ooh, I like that feature in Fallout. I like that feature in Fallout New Vegas too. Condition is also a factor in some RPGs, such oh. as in Fallout 3. Yeah. But a poorly kept weapon. I immediately thought about Fallout. Let's and suffers only in the damage stakes rather than with any interruption. Yeah. It's this reliability and simplicity that gives the weapon much of its charm. Other weapons might be more high tech, but that does you no good if it chokes in dusty environments. Exactly. It seems almost sacrilegious to tamper with the purity of the AK. Strapping anything superfluous to the weapon is an insult to the design principles of Kalashnikov. Some games do let you customize your AK-47 with a variety of attachments. Ah. Optics, suppressors, and garish paint jobs. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare had the right idea, as equipping a red dot sight would harm the AK-47's long-range damage, meaning the most sensible choice was just a plain rifle with iron sights. There you go. Remember, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Exactly! Thank you, Ahoy! Of course, ahoy. if you're some tin-pot dictator of some far-flung land, you can generally do whatever you like. And this extends to having your favourite rifle gold-plated. <laughs> Although such weapons are ornamental and clearly not designed for the rigours of battle. 
Some games do feature golden guns. Some represent the pinnacle of accomplishment with the weapon, a reward for the completion of challenges, while others just represent an absence of good taste. <laughs> what do you mean you don't want to flash a shiny gold AK-47? <laughs> so, the AK-47, the very best there is. From drug lords to peasant rebellions, the AK is everyone's favorite weapon. A great equalizer, irrespective of wealth or status. It's not the most accurate weapon, nor the most elegant, but it simply doesn't have to be. It's good enough. Oh, it sure is. It excels where fighters need it most. It's reliable. Stoppages are rare, and any faults that do occur can probably be fixed with a hammer. It's simple to use. There's no need to pour over a manual. The AK is point and shoot. It is. It's so simple, a child could use it. And in some parts of the world, they often do. So it's cheap, easy to manufacture, and even easier to acquire. If you're looking to arm an insurrection on a budget, no other rifle will come close. It is an old weapon, but it's not yet outdated. At the end of World War II, it was cutting edge and led the way for the rise of the assault rifle during the 20th century. Today, although not quite as high-tech as some infantry weapons, the AK-47 still performs its duty. And with 100 million rifles in existence, its popularity is unlikely to evaporate anytime soon. With its widespread use and low cost, the weapon can be counted alongside the most basic of tools. The hammer. The sickle. The AK-47. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, farewell. Very few things are as iconic as the AK-47. It is such a well-known firearm. It really is just all around the world. So incredibly iconic, especially for its groundbreaking engineering at the time in World War II. It will forever be one of those guns that succeeds due to its simplicity. Sometimes simple is better. What do you think about it? Thank you so much for watching. Ahoy, as always, makes incredible, incredible commentary videos. So please check out Ahoy. He is so educational. So please check him out. Not thank you guys enough for introducing me to Ahoy because I have been absolutely obsessed with his content. And I love learning about this, especially learning about the history of all my favorite and iconic firearms. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.